Hey, how's it going? Let's take a look at a vintage toy today. Today we're going to take a look at the Flying Boxcar and Combat Team by Ideal from 1958. 1958, this is a big box toy. Um, let's start by looking at that big box itself. Uh, forgive the audio, this makes noise when I'm moving this camera back. I think we need to bring it back a bit. Let's get... Let's look at the box first. Did I say to forgive the dirty... Did I say something about the dusty table? We need to dust this table. But in order to dust this table, we first need to take a look at the flying box car and combat team. This box is huge. It's about 20 inches by 24 inches or something. It's hard to even get it all on camera like this. But see it says flying box car and combat team it has this cutout so that you can bend it forward for display and it was already uh, like that when I got it the graphics are amazing on the front it it shows you the elements of the combat team that come with it there's six pieces it shows them down here it shows them going into the front of the flying box car see that It's a wonderful toy. It's ideal. Isn't that great? Soldiers aren't accurately depicted. There's no members of the combat team that are armed like that, that are marching with weapons. We'll get to that in a second. Flying box car. This uh, packaging is in great condition. It's a little bit faded and worn, but... I mean, it's from 1958. How old does this make it? Like 65 years old or something? All right, let's get to the toy. About right. Yeah, I gotta put this giant box somewhere. Bear with me. Okay. So here's what you get. You get this huge airplane that opens up. We'll get to that. I think we'll do we'll do the, the elements of the team first. Uh, you get this giant airplane. It's really big. It's got about a 20-inch wingspan, and it's about 18 inches from front to back. It snaps shut, and you can fit everything and everyone inside. The propellers move. There's no other action. It's not motorized. It has metal elements, and then old era uh, ideal plastic which is great so now let's get to the stuff that you get what comes with it you get a jeep it's neat having uh, these miniature army vehicles produced by ideal I don't have anything like this made by ideal it's uh, real sturdy, and you can see. So this is that, once again, early era. It's 1958. So the plastic here has a little bit of a rubbery feel to it, or vinyl-y feel to it. And if you've played with this stuff and you felt it, you, you understand what I'm saying. So what's cool here with this toy is that it does come with seated figures that actually fit into the vehicles. And we'll talk about this, the scale of the soldiers and the scale of the vehicles that come with this plane are a little bit smaller than what we're used to and I'll show you that in a second. Now the, the Jeep has a trailer attachment at the back it has a hitch and you come with a, a, a series of different trailers to attach to the Jeep or to you'll see a like a deuce and a half a big truck. So this is cool also you can seat a soldier in here and this neat spins around the searchlight spotlight and it kind of moves and even from 1958 it still has the reflective disc of paper in there we've talked about this before this almost feels and looks to me like one of those toys that was like maybe at, at a, a grandmother's house or an aunt's house and was rarely even played with by kids maybe just a couple times a few times and then it was put up in the closet and it was just kept in the closet this is a really cool truck
pretty neat how they used to do this. Put this guy here. There's six different elements that come here other than the men. We'll get to the men last. This is a communications device or something, some sort of radar monitoring device. A guy can sit here. It's neat. Look at the detail. And guys can stand there on that, that grate if you wanted to. You'll see the figures are in scale with all of this stuff. They're a bit smaller than we're used to. You can see them on the table. This came almost complete. There's just a couple elements that we're missing, and we're going to talk about that next. So then it also comes with a couple artillery attachments. One of them is this really cool little cannon. And you can see there's spots here to plug in some shells. Because this is a spring-firing cannon that came with little shells. Mine did not. That's the elements that are missing here. Not even one of these little shells was in the box. I even uh, took the insert out of the box because the box, the inside, we didn't show that, but it's kind of large and unwieldy. But anyway, uh, inside there, I looked underneath the insert to see if maybe there was a missile or a uh, artillery shell, but there was nothing. I could find nothing. So what you would do, so first of all, this plugs into the truck or the Jeep. The shells plug into here. Yeah. There's a little spring in here. So you would drop one of the shells in, and then you pull back this. Now, it, 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 this one, it's not really working, but really there was a firing mechanism here. But it does have these little gauges to adjust the trajectory. Isn't that neat? But yeah, so at one time there was a sort of firing mechanism here. This one, this doesn't really work that well, as you can see. Or, or at all. Doesn't, it's not working at all. It's a pretty cool little thing, isn't it? All right. little artillery piece. Here's something else. So this is the last element of the vehicles of the combat team, or the, the artillery element that comes, and it's a rocket launcher. Yeah, one of the figures can sit here. It has this little peg thing to, to set it up when it's not being towed, I guess. And... This had rockets. We can see them illustrated on the, the cover of the, of the toy, or on the box of the toy. It shows this with a rocket loaded into it. So it did come with at least one rocket that we know of, because we can see it pictured there. And this also, this has a spring in it that still works. Do you see that? So you would put a rocket in here. A kid would put a rocket in here. And then pull this back. And let go, and it has just a little give to it. So there is a tiny spring that's still inside there from 1958, apparently. So no rockets, no shells. So uh, there's one more thing that came... Well, let's get to that. Yeah, let's do it now. So there's one more thing that did come in the box. It's not even a part of the combat team. It's not. In fact, it's not even made by Ideal. It's made by a company called Renwall, which is one of my favorite old plastic army toy companies, Renwall. There's so many things that can tell you this is a Renwall. I like it says U.S. Armored Car right on the top there. And then on the in, under, so that these tires and on the underside it will say Renwall, see? On the inside. So this is not to original to the set. They just included it and put it in the box because they had it. Maybe it was already in the box. Some kid had put it in there and it was still in there. But this is period. This would have been, this is also from about 1958. Uh, and it looks like somebody painted it or put some black marker on it. I've never seen one like this. But I do have one of these already. And you'll see the one that I have is silver. It's also same time period. Renoir looks the same. See, look, the same mold and everything. It's just in better shape and it's much cooler. It's the silver one. It almost looks like this one that I have here look, is in, to me, what looks like unplayed with condition. Like this came out of some sort of a, of a warehouse find, which used to happen back in the 70s and 80s and 90s. 
And a lot of the toys from those warehouse finds are just still circulating around, and they've really never even been played with by kids, just been owned by collectors over the years. So we get this, which doesn't belong here, but it's not bad because it's not it's not exactly the same as what we already have. But now we have two Renwall armored cars, which is just fine because armored cars are badass, aren't they? All right. So from what I've read, the set originally came with 20 figures. Now we have 17. So our, our set came with 17. We're missing three figures. And we did get these, <laughs> the trees that the, this is funny too. This was inside the box at the bottom of it were the original little trees that the, the army man would have been attached to when you opened up the box. I, there, I believe there's also an instruction sheet. I don't know what you would need instructions for with this toy, but I didn't get the instruction sheet, but I read somewhere that it came with an instruction sheet. I don't know what this is from. Um, so maybe these are for the men, but these also could have been for those little those little uh, shells or bombs or, or missiles. It could have been what was attached to here. I don't really know for sure. The men could have come bagged. This could have been our, our missiles that were missing and our bombs. Or not bombs, or what do you call them? Just artillery shells. So the men that we do, so I, in, I think that we're missing, we're missing three figures here. And the three figures I think we're missing are three seated figures. I think the set came with more than just two guys sitting. There's a spot for a guy to sit there, spot for a guy to sit there and a spot for a guy to sit there. So that's five. That would make sense. So back here, we have the other sculpts. All the other figures are in two different sculpts. So there's a total of three different sculpts of figures that come in the set. You get the seated figures. You get standing figures that look like they're in formation, that look really good. These are small. I, I don't know what the mill, millimeter size on them, but we'll make some comparisons in a second. You'll see how small they are. And this is the other sculpt, with, which is a guy, a soldier walking. It also comes with this ramp that works very well. I think this is a key element to the toy. If I had this and I didn't have this ramp, I would be kind of bummed. Because the ramp is part of playing with the toy, isn't it? Part of playing with this toy is driving these guys up in here. Or backing these artillery elements up in here. Putting them up inside here, right? Doing that. And then also part of it is lining these guys up and making it look like these guys are, are going in for a jump or something. Or walking up onto green ramp or something like that. That they're all going in. The combat team is going in. That they're gonna, they're gonna be flying in the flying box car, and this guy's sliding down the ramp. So you get it. There, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Before we get to the flying box car itself, let's make some figure comparisons, so you can see how little this stuff is. So here's one of these little walking guys that it comes with. And here's a standard size Mark's army man. This is like the size that would have come with your Force 10 or your Navarone play set or Battleground. That's exactly what this is. This is that. This is a, a larger scale figure also from Mark, but Mark's, but from an earlier period. So this is Mark's as well from about the same time from the late 50s, about the same time as, as these, these ideal figures that we're looking at, but the scale is quite different. And these guys are, are even bigger than your old green army men. These little guys that come with this are an inch and a half tall. This old Mark's uh, marching guy from the training center. He's two and a half to three inches tall, two and a, two and three quarters or something. And then our standard old school Marks Army men, a little bit shorter at two and a quarter, two and a half. Exciting stuff, isn't it? Let's look at the vehicle or the vehicles. 
So the Jeep that comes here with this, remember how I said I like that the, the figures fit in here, so it's going to be smaller. So it's smaller than your than your Mark's Jeep, and also smaller than this is this is I think a Renwall Jeep. Is this Renwall? Sure is. Renwall has a, some funny history to it. See it right there. It was started by this guy. I think his name was Oscar Lawner. His last name is is the name of the company spelled backwards. L A W N E R is his name. His name was Lawner. So he got really creative and he decided, he decided to just spell his name backwards and and make a toy company. So that's why it's Renwall. It's kind of an unusual thing. So this will fit the larger guys, the army men that we were just looking at. If you have the seated ones, they fit pretty good. There's the scale difference there. Here's something else that's Renwall that is smaller scale though. This is a Renwall. It says US Army tank on the top. Same exact time period as this. And this turret spins around. It's a very nice little tank, isn't it? This piece fits perfectly with this. It's actually kind of in scale with uh, with this set. So you could use this little tank for this set. Maybe you guys used to play with this. This is Auburn rubber. This is really, really fun stuff. One of the ways that you can tell Auburn rubber is they'll have a number on the vehicle somewhere see that 652 that's actually the number of this toy like if you look up auburn auburn rubber or auburn half track 652 or maybe even just put in auburn 650 auburn toys 652 this this thing will show up this half track armored truck will show up these are really soft and rubbery like if you play with this in the tub in a warm bathtub this thing just gets all soft when you were a kid, you might have memories of that. You can run this just under warm water in the sink when you clean it, and it will get all soft. So you got to be a little bit careful. This is an awesome toy also. Mid-50s, 55, 56, 58. These are at dime stores. I don't know why we're looking at all this stuff. We should look at the plane, but it's just comparisons. I'm just showing you different cool stuff. This is a U.S. Army howitzer made by Renwall. It plugs into the back of the Jeep. Look at that. How cool is that? The, uh, the the wheels kind of bow out over time. The plastic isn't really stable enough to hold these wheels up or something. But this is a neat thing. little attachment. Let's look at this beautiful, amazing, spectacular airplane. All right. So you can take this ramp. You can put it in there, fold it in, however you want to do it. Put stuff in here, right? That's just the thing about this. That's the gimmick of this toy. So the gimmick of this toy is putting all these army men and all these vehicles and even your other army men like this. You can perfectly, it's perfectly fine. I would actually probably be doing this because these little blue guys aren't that cool to play with. They're not doing anything, are they? Uh, but I would still do it. You can see the metal wing goes all the way through inside here. It's all sealed. Everything's in great shape in this, in this toy. There's none, no cracks. There's this tape residue that I haven't tried to take off yet. When I saw this tape residue, I first thought, oh, well, I don't mind it. Maybe it doesn't close and snap shut because I got a good deal on this. But actually, it does close and snap shut perfectly fine. So when I see this tape residue, I know this is going to sound crazy. This, is, this might possibly be original uh, packaging on this toy. They might have put a, a piece of tape on there when they packaged this thing up in that cardboard box. So there's no detail inside here in the cockpit that would be cool if there was something a place where you know that you could put the pilots in or there was a place for pilots but there isn't but it's a big plane look at the size of this thing these propellers spin really well freely you have three wheels in the landing gear they work and spin very well solid rubber on the rear, same deal. Works and spins really well. These back windows are simulated. This is all, I guess this is, what is this? Tin or, I'm not sure what kind of metal this is. It's solid. It's not, it's not soft and easy. This is C18410. I think C18, I haven't seen, there we go. I didn't look it up. I, I did when I first, first was researching this and i bought this 
I looked at the real plane a bunch on pictures on my phone. I think it's the C-184, but I could be wrong. But you could just look up the flying box car and it shows up. This is a real plane. So this was a real plane, and I don't know that much about it, but I can tell you that in my opinion, this, this troop mover is what we're looking at, special operations troop mover of some sort, is a predecessor to the helicopter. This is an attempt to move, this vehicle's purpose was an attempt to move a small fighting forces uh, strategically onto the battlefield uh, and off the battlefield perhaps, uh, but onto the battlefield strategically in the same way that we would later end up utilizing helicopters in combat. That's my theory of this. I could be wrong. Is there anything I missed? Did I say I was going to do something else? I feel like I said we're going to look at something else after we looked at this and talked just about that plane. I can't remember now. I really think that's it. Do you guys like this? Sorry about the dust. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Looking at this really cool toy, man. I mean, maybe we didn't look at this. Uh, it's in like unplayed with condition. Almost all of the paint. There's a little chip right there on the U. The couple little chips, but otherwise, all of the paint on this toy, on this 60-year-old toy that was made to be played with by children. And in 1958, toys, all of them were being played with by children, with the exception of unusual toys that were kept in unusual places. Sometimes you had, I had, and and I think. Uh, other people, I think Hans mentioned it too. Um, other people have had, and if, 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 if there was me and it was him, that means plenty of other people of our generation had grandmothers or aunts or uncles that kept toys at their houses uh, permanently just to be played with by the nieces and the nephews and the cousins. So I had a couple different aunts that did this, that had upscale high-level toys just like this they were kept in their original box that were always in the hall closet. And when you went to Aunt Clarice's house or Aunt Emily's house, I would, you would just go to that closet. And sometimes you're looking forward to going there just for this. I'm like, oh shit, we're going to Aunt Clarice's house? Excellent, I get to play with the flying box car. This flying box car, it would have been played with by my cousins, 10 or 20 or 15 or years older than me back when it was new. And then it would have, and that's when she would have bought it. And as the cousins... And her nieces and nephews and my cousins that were older than me got older. The toy just stayed there and, and continued to be played with the kids as they got older in different generations. That's the sort of situation that this toy perhaps came from. We don't know for sure. It's a mystery to us. That's also part of the, uh, the excitement of this. Thanks for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Boy, if you're interested, if this is something that excites you too, that you think is, is, is pretty cool, I, you know, I hope you find your flying box car with combat team out there. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.